Alrighty, hello every folks and good morning. Uh, so, I just wanted to, uh, to take a quick note here to appreciate the mobile port of XCOM 2. Uh, like, I've been impressed every time that this game's come out again. Uh, when it came out, uh, you know, on PC, I really liked it, but one of the annoying problems was that no matter what I ran it on, it ran like absolute ass. Like, I granted, my laptop wasn't the fanciest thing in the world, but still, it just didn't typically uh, run particularly well. It wasn't super well-optimized or anything. Um, but then, uh, as time went on, you know, the uh, once uh, the, uh, the DLC dropped and stuff like that, the optimizations were, frankly, a bit insane in terms of just how much was going on there. Um, so I was, uh, was really darn impressed by all that stuff. Um, but then finally, uh, when I saw it come out on iPad, when I saw it come out on uh, on Switch and stuff like that, it was it was nuts to see the see this game that basically would make my laptop melt. Uh, that was uh, going and running on something that you would have with you on a toilet. So either way, uh, this. Uh, this port is frankly nutty to me, and it, especially due to the fact that you can basically get it for free. I don't mean pri uh, piracy. I mean like if you were to, uh, if you ever do those uh, Google uh, surveys or whatnot, they give you like, you know, anywhere from like ten cents to like a dollar fifty for just randomly popping up questions every now and then. So pretty much anything as far as uh, as far as uh, any mobile games or whatever go. Uh, uh, like, it basically becomes free. Like, I got the original XCOM on this, the XCOM EU for free. I got uh, uh, this one for free. Um, like, it's just one of these cases where you can very uh, very easily uh, uh, get anything on there uh, for exactly free. Because you can't really use that stuff for much of anything else. Uh, anyway. So, yeah. The, in general, if you're wondering whether this version's cut down in any way... Um, there's only one thing that I've seen that's actually different outside of the graphics. Um, and that's going to be... Here, can this guy actually make this run? Uh, no. Okay, let's see. Let's see if he can shoot his way out of this little, uh, little spot here. So I, I decided to pick a, a lost map to give an idea of, uh, of just how much stuff can be on screen without really playing any difference. I mean, it's been really, really, uh, really surprising to see it functioning as well as it has. I mean, as far as the Switch version goes, I think this even runs better than the Switch version. Uh, it feels like it runs the same as the iPad version. Um, but yeah, it's it just feels really good to see it, you know? Um, so yeah, it, it, I haven't seen anything missing outside of one exact feature, and that would have been the... Um, uh, that would have been taking pictures upon the uh, kind of exit of a mission. So, like, we're going to go ahead and exit one right here to try and show this off a little bit. Um, but aside from that, you can still do pictures and stuff like that. Actually, there might even still be the option to do pictures somewhere. Granted, there isn't really a whole lot to take a picture of in this case, because I had one, like, barely what was left of one guy that made it out of this particular one. Um, uh, but yeah, there is a... Uh, if you wanted to do all of the propaganda pictures and stuff like that, you can still do those at base. Uh, but aside from that, it seems to be literally just... XCOM 2C and its best thing here. The loading times are kind of nutty, as you can see here. They're practically instant. I'm assuming it just loads everything up ahead of time. Um, the initial launch time is like 15, 20 seconds, but then after that, you can just kind of keep it running in the background and it ends up working great. Um, so, for example, if we wanted to memorialize this dude, we still have all of those usual options over here to do your propaganda stuff. Um, as you'd expect. Funnily enough, this part actually works better than the Switch, because if you uh, if you ever played in docked mode, or not docked, but if you ever played handheld mode on the Switch, it would just like freak out all over the dang place whenever using this. Um, I'll leave photo booth, yes. All of these guys died embarrassingly in really stupid ways. We're just gonna ignore that that happened. This guy's gonna go become a better Templar, and of course you gotta have parry. Never say no to parry, and then we move on. Um, yeah, it runs better than the, uh, it runs a far sight better than the, uh, uh, PC version on launch, that's for sure. Um, you can't skip some of the cutscenes, so for example, like, uh, the, uh, the intro to this guy, um, or, for example, uh, your, uh, or your new class cutscenes, you can't skip those, unfortunately. This was actually something that was around for the mobile, uh, uh port of XCOM EU as well, where you could skip most of the cutscenes, but some of them you just couldn't until a little bit later. Like, that one you can skip towards the end there. I think it's a load times thing. Um, the ones that introduce you to, uh, to new classes, I don't think you can skip those at all. 
Uh, but other than that, this actually feels really good as far as UI goes. I, again, just to compare this with the uh, the Switch version, um, like in the Switch version, they assigned uh, bridge and uh, research and all of that to uh, particular buttons. In this case, it's been kind of interesting to actually care about the layout for once. I actually really prefer this version right now of all the different versions of, of uh, XCOM 2. Um, just because, uh, you know, instead of exiting out of anything, you just like go and click on the bridge instead. You never pay attention to where the bridge is until you suddenly need to click on it, you know? So anyways, it's just, it's nice to see um, everything feels right on a phone. Like, I don't know if anybody else uh, happens to need to supplement their income through, you know, doing things like plasma donation, but it's great to be able to play something like this, you know, with, uh, with one arm. Um, I know weird advertisement for it for any of y'all that are uh, not on that particular struggle bus, but it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, I think this might actually be my favorite version of this right now. Um, so again, if you wanted to get it for free, uh, just go do uh, Google surveys, just look it up. It might already be on your phone and it literally just pops up a thing every now and then like, hey, you watched, uh, you know, whatever random YouTube video. Did it suck? No. Okay, here you go. Have like 50 cents. And you just do these over time and it stacks up like there's... Alrighty, my bad on that one. Uh, accidentally, I was gesturing around too hard and uh, kind of pulled the cord straight out of my phone. <laughs> uh, definitely way better uh, lag time uh, when uh, uh, when not trying to uh, uh, to play this uh, via Wi-Fi like we did all the other times. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Uh, as far as as far as this version goes, it's really solid. Um, like I said, just do the surveys and whatnot. I don't think there's anything on my phone that I've actually paid for, um, at least not directly as such. Uh, yeah, those surveys are frankly really, really solid. Um, because basically it's nothing that you wouldn't already be doing. Um, and yeah, this version, as far as I can tell, it has all the DLC in there. It has all of the New Game Plus options. It has all of the uh, War of the Chosen options. Um, it seems to have everything in there, so, uh, so yeah. If that's what you wanted, like, even while playing it right now, my phone feels as cool as if it was just sitting on the counter. Um, granted, you play it long enough, eventually you'll feel some slight warmness and what have you. Uh, you do enough lost missions, you'll end up seeing that. But, you know, that's going to be true of any uh, mobile version of anything, so... Uh, that is what it is on that one. Um, generally, you don't see too many insanely good uh, ports uh, showing up on mobile, but... Like, this stuff has come such a long way at this point like it's it's just so, it comes such a dang long way um yeah just immediately a lot of these options that you typically don't see very much on the uh, pc like these uh, uh these not little uh, red notifications off on the side of your you know you haven't made a new technology would you like better cannons hell yes i'd like 10 days you really got to give me the cannons okay whatever <sighs> actually wait that's just modular cannons i don't care about modular cannons never mind uh, hang on, let's let's go back to that. Uh, where's my research over here? Let's go back to this thing. Change our research here to something that isn't trash. I thought that was uh, uh, improved cannon damage. Never mind. I don't need like. Well, actually, that could come in really handy with like repeaters, expanded mags, and. Uh, hmm. Well, I'm gonna regret it later. We're just gonna go ahead and leave that. <laughs> That's what I love about uh, XCOM 2C, why I think that this is the best of, like, the Newcom games and whatnot. Uh, there's so much stuff that you can in, you can in, kind of screw yourself over for in an attempt to uh, to get some kind of weird niche benefit, you know? Like, modular cannons, if you didn't know, like, you, you get inspired researches and things like that, where if you didn't, uh, didn't pick up something at the right time, uh, you could just end up uh, completely missing out on it for your entire run. Uh, so it's this thing of, like, do you screw up your early game setup in order to potentially gain a huge benefit later, or what? Uh, like, in the case of the modular cannons there, this would just allow for further modified cannon things. So, for example, you know, if you wanted extra parts on your stuff. And it's one of those cases of, it's it's kind of a confidence thing of, like, do you assume that you're going to maybe, uh, maybe run into that situation? Do you assume you're going to be able to make it that far? No, but we're going to try it anyway, you know? All right. Anyway, uh, enough rambling for me. Um, you get the idea. This stuff is uh, is just really impressive to my eyes. Like I I love this version. I love to see that it uh, works so darn well on this thing. Um, as far as customization options, they all seem to be there, minus you know like a couple of bits and pieces here, just like the Switch version. Um, for the most part, it all seems to be there. You have all of your same customization options. It still plays incredibly well. Um, and 
if you wanted to have better fidelity, better frame rates, all of that kind of thing, uh, you do have options to switch over to those modes as well. But personally, I prefer to always just stick to everything, stick everything to power saving mode and what have you. Um, but yeah, the, the, uh, the launch times on missions are pretty dang near instant. Uh, the load times outside of that initial launch practically don't exist. It's it's so good. It's so good to see. I mean, obviously, again, you're losing out on a little bit of graphical fidelity here, but again, you're playing this on your phone, so I, that kind of comes with the territory. Now, if only somebody could go and do the same thing with something like Felseal on a phone, you know. Anyway, we'll get to that when we get to it. Y'all have yourselves a good one. Thank you for stopping by, and, uh, and yeah, give it a go.